So this is probably the least most exciting MacBook Air to be released in the last five years. I mean, with the exception of a few small changes, we've kind of seen it all already. And it results in one fundamental problem, just how much improvement can you squeeze out of each new generation when the first one, the M1 MacBook Air, was already so good and such a huge improvement over the previous Intel MacBooks. Also, big thanks to Lathan for sponsoring part of this video, but more on that later. So first of all, I wanna talk about the core audience of the MacBook Air because let's face it, here on Tech YouTube, we all get really sweaty and nerdy over things like core counts or GPU performance or fancy graphs, but the reality is 90% of MacBook Air buyers simply walk into an Apple store, right, and ask what is a good laptop for everyday use like emails, web browsing, or maybe, you know, taking notes at college or something, and 10 minutes later, they walk out with a MacBook Air. And those activities I mentioned are what the vast majority of people use a MacBook Air for. You know what, pause the video right now, jump down into the comments and comment exactly what you use your MacBook Air for and we can all see for ourselves what the most common things are. Now, of course, it's possible to do more intense things like you know, edit photos and videos, maybe even some gaming, and I'll get into that later, but yeah, you get the point. And so the absolute top criteria for the M3 MacBook Air is A, how good is it at those everyday things, and B, how good is the battery life? So let's start with everyday performance. Now, some people wrongly expected a huge performance jump like what we got when Apple phased out Intel in favor of their own silicon with the M1 back in 2020, but those huge jumps every single year are unsustainable. And I think it's worth mentioning that when the Air was running Intel, the performance jumps from generation to generation sucked and honestly weren't even noticeable at all. And the M3 is merely a refinement of Apple silicon that was already really good. And I usually have quite a few apps open at the same time. I mean, two email clients, Slack, Notion, Excel, Spotify, and on top of that, usually 10 to 15 browser tabs. And I remember on the Intel MacBooks, I would get some lag and the dreaded beach ball of death every now and then, uh, particularly during animations that happen when you minimize an app or enter mission control, for example. Not anymore. My experience was smooth and it was very difficult to throw enough at the system to get it to display any signs of stress. So as a little test, I reformatted an M1 and an M2 MacBook Air, installed the latest version of macOS and tested all three side by side. These are all the base models, by the way, with eight gigabytes of RAM. The M3 was just barely quicker to open apps or load web pages, but in real life, there's effectively no difference. The only way to find any noticeable performance differences between the three is by doing specific intensive tasks, right? And I went into way more detail on this in my M1 vs M2 vs M3 MacBook Air comparison video, and I will link that below. The point is, yeah, sure, look, the M3 is more powerful, but not by a huge amount, especially compared to the previous M2. But again, going back to what I said before, 95% of MacBook Air users are not doing anything intensive, and even if they are, it's only every once in a while, so they really won't notice much of a difference. And I think now is a good time to mention something you should not do once in a while, and that's cleaning your teeth with a proper toothbrush. And that's where the sponsor for this section of the video comes in, Lathan's Wave Electric Toothbrush. So I recently went on a trip to South Korea and Japan and needed an electric toothbrush with good battery life. The Wave lasted about three weeks on a single charge, and when I needed to charge it, there's a convenient snap-on magnetic fast charging cable that can charge to 100% battery in just 2.5 hours. And I honestly felt like the Wave kept my teeth cleaner than my previous Oral-B electric toothbrush. The head actually vibrates and oscillates while cleaning, so it seems to lift off plaque and also get my gums cleaner too. Personally, I prefer the softer head, but you get two others in the pack that you can change between. One feature I especially loved was using the pressure sensitive button on the Wave to lock the toothbrush so it wouldn't automatically turn on inside my luggage during travel. My previous toothbrush didn't have this and one time I arrived at the hotel with its battery fully drained. The button combined with the handle with almost zero gaps means the Wave is also dirt and IPX7 waterproof, making it super easy to clean while protecting the technology inside. 
I also think it just looks way better than other comparable electric toothbrushes, and the price point is usually similar or even a bit cheaper than other popular brands. Plus, Leifen offers high quality brush heads at an amazingly affordable price. Only $9.99 for a three pack and $16.99 for a six pack, roughly 40% less than competitors. So click the link in the description and upgrade your teeth brushing today. Okay, let's move on to the second most important factor for the M3 MacBook Air, the battery. The M3 gets the same 52.6 watt hour battery as the M2 MacBook Air, but a big focus for Apple for the M3 chip was efficiency. Now, if you watch a lot of YouTube videos, for example, YouTube has started using a video codec called AV1, which is essentially just a new and more efficient method of getting a video from YouTube's server and onto your screen. And now the M3 chip comes with an AV1 decode engine, allowing the M3 to stream and play back these videos super easily and with almost no CPU or GPU processing power required, which obviously saves the battery life. Now, AV1 is still in the early stages, not all videos online will take advantage of it, but that and also the M3 being the new and more efficient three nanometer design results in a slight boost to battery life over the M2 maybe one to sometimes two hours, but only when you're doing specific things. And when the battery life of all three Apple Silicon MacBook Airs are already like 15 hours, are you really going to notice an extra hour or two? Now, one interesting new change is that the M3, for the first time ever, can output to two external monitors. Now, I wouldn't necessarily call this an improvement because you have to close the lid of the MacBook in order to output to the second monitor, losing access to the trackpad and touch ID, but you at least get the option of both now. The M3 also gets what Apple calls an anodization seal on the midnight color only, which supposedly reduces smudges and fingerprints. It doesn't, so definitely reconsider choosing Midnight because it just gets dirtier much easier than the other colors. Now, all of this good stuff aside, there's one big elephant in the room, and that's the fact that the M3 MacBook Air only comes with eight gigabytes of RAM and a 256 gigabyte SSD. Even my phone has more than that. And I remember we all had this exact same conversation back in 2020, that those base model specs weren't enough and that people would run into issues in the future. But now it is four years later and it still hasn't really changed that much. Now, to be fair, again, for the target market of the MacBook Air, the base model specs are usually enough. It's a controversial opinion, I know, but you don't need 16 gigabytes of RAM to send emails and watch YouTube videos. The 256 gigabyte SSD, which works out to be actually 215 gigabytes after you take system files and the size of the macOS operating system into account, is a little trickier, but external storage drives are cheap now. Side note, the M3 seems to have fixed that slower SSD that the base model M2 got, so that's good, I guess. But no, I don't think the problem is that the M3 Air only comes with eight gigabytes of RAM and a 256 gigabyte SSD. The problem is the cost of the upgrades because some people actually do need more RAM or SSD space. And coming in at 200 US dollars each is crazy. I mean, if you bumped up both the RAM and SSD, that's basically a 50% markup on the total cost of the MacBook. Add to that the fact that both the RAM and SSD aren't replaceable because they're physically soldered into the MacBook, it's certainly caused quite a lot of controversy. Now, it is kind of a bait and switch by Apple, right? And Apple knows this. They know that most people don't want or don't need to upgrade the RAM or SSD. And they know the ones that do either will pay it anyway because they don't have a choice or will upgrade to the next version up or the 14 inch pro versions. So why would Apple offer cheaper upgrades or ship the MacBook with those bumped up specs in the first place? And look, I'm not saying that I agree with Apple's thought process here. Uh, you know, ideally I would love 16 gigs of RAM and a larger SSD. It's just the way they've chosen to sell this product. And as consumers, you know, at the end of the day, it's up to us if we want to buy it or not. And to be fair, a lot of the competition on the Windows side come with 16 gigabytes and a larger SSD, but they're also 
usually more expensive than the M3 MacBook Air's starting price. Speaking of price, the M3 Air starts at $1,099 versus the M2 starting at what the original M1 MacBook Air sold at four years ago, or $999. And curiously, although Apple has officially stopped selling the M1 Air on their own website, you can still grab it brand new for between $650 and $699 from retailers like Best Buy. And this kind of puts the M3 in a weird place, right? Like you have the almost identical M2 you can pick up lightly used for a few hundred dollars less or a brand new M1 for close to half the price. So although I 100% recommend the M3, it is a great laptop, uh, the fact that those other versions exist really make the purchase decision less clear. So I made a video comparing all three of them in detail so you can pick which one suits your needs better and which one you should spend your hard-earned cash on.